Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Nkhlan Nene delivered his maiden medium-term budget policy statement address to Parliament this week. Terence Creamer joins me to unpick some of the major themes. Hi Terence. Hi. Is it fair to say that Minister Nene provided a sobering outlook or view of the current state of affairs of South Africa's finances and economy? Yes, I think that is uh, what happened. I think it was a, a reality check. I think the word he used was a turning point in our finances. So we've had an expansionary budget path over a number of years. Um, initially, post-apartheid, we had a you know we had to rein in a number of things, and the budgets, uh, the uh, finances weren't in a good shape. But I think as we evolved and we had a growing period post-apartheid, we had a, a, a good revenue growth and. We were able to even get into a, a fiscal surplus or a budget surplus at one stage. But over the last few years since the global economic crisis, we've really come under pressure and we've used that fiscal space up. And uh, South Africa, on top of that, uh, external uh, the development, also internally, the domestic side, has had a number of problems and this economy is really underperforming. And I think uh, the finance minister did quite a good job of just uh, providing that reality check, just reminding people that uh, this economy is underperforming and the government finances in particular are underperforming. Uh, with the uh, economy, the, the new growth outlook being only 1.4% for this year, which is below the, the, the sort of not even very good or very modest 2.7% that was outlined in February, similar and, and in line with what the IMF put out recently in its World Economic Outlook. And then also going, going into the future, there's this view that South Africa is going to battle to break through the 2.5, 2.8, and then eventually 3% level over the three-year horizon. And even that uh, is, uh, I think, the, the, the policy document that came with the, uh, with that, uh, with the statement was that, you know, that even those face some headwinds and some risks, both domestic as well as external uh, risks to that growth outlook. So it could, you know, we could actually underperform that. And it's nowhere near the National Development Plan's 5.5 or 5.4 percent growth that we need yearly to start really addressing that triple scourge of uh, poverty, inequality and unemployment. So we really are not in a good, sh good shape. And then on the government finances side, um, there too, you know, we've had these expansionary budgets and we are still going to be growing our expenditure but at a far slower pace than we would have hoped to. And it's going to have a knock-on effect onto economic growth. And the main issues there is that, you know, we are not uh, receiving the revenues through taxes uh, to really cover our expenditure. So what we've seen is a, a major rise in debt levels, and we're going to continue to see that uh, debt-to-GDP ratio rising for a while. And it's come to a point where it's really reached, I think, what the minister is saying, the limits of what we can do with debt, uh, and it's particularly because uh, there's a lot of uh, still wastage in the system. There's also corruption, I think, that everyone knows about. And, you know, we can't really raise money on the capital markets to fund consumption expenditure. We need that to be directed towards infrastructure and capital uh, expenditure, and, it's, and we need to, you know, uh, prioritize that. And there is this concern as well around this rising wage bill um, with the, within the public sector that currently stands at one-third of whatever government spends annually on its budget goes to remuneration. And would you say that fiscal consolidation is an overarching theme of the budget? That was the theme, and uh, although it was stated, I think, uh, in February by Finance Minister Pravin Gordon at that time, the new Finance Minister has really uh, held, the, held that line of fiscal consolidation. Now, prior to the budget, because of all the demands on the government because of the low growth rate and the, you know, the feeling that you know, it was going to be difficult to rein in expenditure. There was a view that the, uh, the deficit was going to slip well below the 4% outlined by Pravin Gordon in February. It was going to get closer to the 4.5% type level. And, uh, but uh, uh, Finance Minister Nene this week uh, you know, he said that there's going to be actions taken to sort of rein in the expenditure side. Uh, in the immediate term to try and keep it to 4.1 percent of GDP for this year and then you know trying to get it uh, under under even better control in the years ahead 
and the immediate actions are around uh, are the expenditure side really, and that's to try and cut over 20 billion off the the expenditure ceiling over the next two years, and then on the third year the, the ambition is to then to start uh, relaxing that so that we can get into an expansionary phase again to support growth, but over the next two years in particular to try and rein that in. And there's a number of remedies that are being proposed. I mean, I think society will welcome the, the, the belt tightening thing, uh, exercises that are reinforced, the issues around catering budgets, travel expenses, you know, how much uh, hotel accommodation and all that that the public sector has been using. Um, so that, that, that side, you know, so trying to get the government departments to be much more prudent in the way they expend. But then there's also issues around the wage bill and setting, putting a bit of a line in the sand around uh, the wage negotiations that they're entering into with their unions. Uh, unions have, are, we, are requesting 15% and uh, uh, the finance minister is indicating that 6% uh, plus a bit more is where they can uh, maybe what, which, what they can bear, otherwise other things are going to have to be cut. And then there was also this view that certain uh, headcounts will be frozen. And then and certain, you know, uh, there's vacancies in the public sector that have been funded um, that haven't been filled and basically saying, do you really need those and take those off your budgets? So we've seen that. Uh, the, the big issue there is how are they are going to manage that balance between you know, ensuring that the frontline services are not affected. So we need those nurses and doctors and uh, people that are facing uh, the public, uh, the teachers, not to be as affected maybe as the administrative side. And that's going to be, a, uh, there's going to be something of a review to try and ensure, as uh, the, the phrase that he used, that we don't balance the budget on the back of the poor, so that there must be, you know, a, a more prudence in government, but where there's important uh, expenditure to be made, in the areas of uh, you know the social wage, which covers education, healthcare, and of course the social grants, you know we can't you know re rein those in because of the, the situation we are in with regard to poverty, inequality, and unemployment. So there's this, so there's that sort of balancing act that it's going to be interesting to see whether that that can be really implemented, or whether ultimately you know it's e always easiest to cut <laughs> some of those things and. Uh, that ultimately service delivery and the poor suffers most. And part of the mini budget's reality check dealt with the struggling state-owned enterprises. Could you expand on that? Well, I think the, 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 there was a, f a few uh, ahead of the budget that, you know, a lot of the state-owned enterprises, not only Eskom, but there was SAA, the post office, the land bank, and you can list others that are ailing and that they might be clamoring for a bailout and that, uh, 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 and then he would have to respond to that. He only responded to Eskom, and I think uh, Eskom, it's a special case in the sense that electricity really is the lifeblood of e the economy, and we need to get that stabilized, and we need Eskom in the short term. was facing a lot of uh, problems in terms of staying, uh, you know, a going concern, and they needed some sta stability there. So there was the 20 billion allocation for uh, Eskom that came through. But there was also this point emphasized that it's going to be deficit neutral, so that 4%, 4.1% that I mentioned can't be affected. So they're having to find ways of finding that 20 billion rand to fund ESKIM that is not going to affect the deficit. That involves a review of all the state-owned assets in their portfolio from property across to the state-owned agencies and enterprises, and, and they've also got listed and unlisted company holdings. I mean, the most notable one that's coming to the media is the Vodacom holding and whether that will be, you know, disposed of in order to bail out Eskom. But I think it's going to have to be a mul multiple uh, disposals to get to this 20 billion. And then there was also the view that actually any further bailouts of these state-owned enterprises have to also be deficit neutral. So it also has to come from that pool of disposal of non-core assets or non-strategic assets uh, to fund the state-owned enterprises if that is the best remedy. But I think what we got the signal, and uh, uh, people, uh, journalists were questioning around whether it's a policy shift. It was denied as, as such, but it is a policy shift in the sense that I think there's an openness to uh, a, more of a private um, sector involvement in the state-owned companies themselves, because some of them are in such distress and because there's no money in the budget. There's going to be maybe strategic equity partnerships are back on the table 
semi-privatization, privatization of certain assets are back on the table. And that is a major change, I think, from what we saw a few years ago. And I think it's sort of a necessity that has changed that rather than uh, anything else. And that it's going to be interesting once the review has been done of these non-core assets and what they are and, and the level that can be used to maybe help uh, entities such as the post office or SA or SA Express, etc. You know, the, you know, when that has reached the limit, where the government's going to be much more amenable to selling uh, aspects of those state-owned enterprises and uh, introducing an element of privatization into, into the system again. And I think we're going to have a bit more visibility on that later in the year or early next year, and probably by the next budget, because I think by then some of these companies are going to be in major distress, a bit like Eskin was facing major immediate distress. And there's going to have to be announcements probably by February next year as to what we're going to do. But I think that it's a bit of a sigh of relief for society. We, we can't continue to have bailout out of, of a bailout for a lot of these entities. And it's also going to, I think, sharpen the minds of government as to who they put in charge, both on the board level. I think the governance at some of these state owned enterprises has been weak, but also at the management level that we, we have to have the right people running these entities. And uh, if we can't find them, then it looks like they will be turning to the private sector more to help out. So I think that was probably the most, uh, other than you know, ra pulling back and saying that we are going to hold fiscal consolidation as a matter of urgency and priority and it can't be delayed. I think the announcements around state-owned enterprises and how those are going to be managed and their finances and their distress and their troubles are going to be managed into the future, I think was probably the most significant part of this uh, mini-budget. Thanks, Terence. That is the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.